Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another gameplay video. Today we have myself on the bottom playing Red Broly. Up top we have James playing Mecha Frieza. These are two of the decks that are looking to be some of the best positioned in the meta as we move into set 12. So wanted to show you guys this gameplay today between two of the perceived top tier decks. So with that being said guys, if you are new here, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you miss a video. If you want to support the channel, go down in the description. There are tons of ways to do so. Particularly today, if you want to buy or pre-order any of the cards you see in today's video, make sure to use my link to TCG Player. It does help out a lot. Now, with the intro, um, I uh, I think I kept Piccolo Jr. in my hand, just, just off memory here. Um, but even if I didn't, I actually would have highly considered keeping Piccolo Jr. in my hand, and I'll explain why. So normally with Red Broly, you're not usually going to keep Piccolo Jr. in your hand because you want to you know, mulligan for those one-drop Broly's, mulligan for the rest of your chain, stuff like that. But in this match in particular, Mecha Frieza has a really powerful turn one play they can do if, if they go first, which is play Planet Vegeta for zero and then search Dark Power Black Mass Sand and then play the, the BMS for the one energy that they have available. So I kind of wanted to keep Piccolo Jr. in my hand. Again, I think off memory I did do that. I wasn't quite looking when I was doing my little intro. But yeah, I would have definitely kept Piccolo Jr. in hand if it was in the opener and then, you know, just still try a hard mole for your one drops so I can remove the BMS if you were to play it. Anyways here, I, I don't have the tournament pack one drop in hand, so I'm going to go for Vampa looking at top seven. He's going to activate Cold Bloodless Blind. He does have to do Bloodless Blind because if he basically allows me to, to decide which battle card I'm going to play off of Vampa's effect, then uh, it basically won't work. Bloodless basically won't work because Bloodless can only work in window one. Counterplays that, counterplays that affect how things are going to be played, like, like Cold Bloodless, which makes a card come in with a skills negated crusher ball makes a card come into rest mode um those have to be used in window one so he is going to negate my leader swing with zamas super combo and tap my one drop broly not not to gain my leader swing but out combo it so i'm in i'm in a pretty bad position here so it looks like um i probably should have swung leader before i even used vampa but honestly i didn't think he would use super combo on the first crit swing of the game but i think it was a pretty good move a very very good move by james here so I'm tapped out. He's getting full advantage out of Universe 9 Assemble. And now he is going leader. I'm assuming into the one drop here. Yep, one drop is gone. Not much I can do to protect that. Would have cost me two cards, which would have been way too much. I'd, ra I'd rather just use Wampa again and just try and get into a new one drop at that point. He has used his one of Cold Bloodlust. He could have Tyrannical Blow in hand with his one available energy or obviously just take a light to use it. So either way is not going to be super ideal for me, but hopefully he does not have another option for another one drop. Debating with the charge here, charging another copy of the six drop is risky because I only play three in the deck. And since I did go second, I have a decent shot of playing the six drop this game because uh, basically if you don't know in Red Broly, if you go second, you can basically drop the six drop a turn earlier than if you were to go first because of the five drops, different restrictions and things like that. So it looks like we're using Vampa's effect. That's going to get put in rest mode by Poutine. So that's got Poutine out of the way, which is nice. Discarding a card off of Vampa's skill. We're going to crit a light to search for Ba. Ba is going to grab us our five drop, which we did not have in hand. So we've gotten Poutine out of the way. That feels pretty good. Now we have to worry about Chappelle. So Chappelle puts us in a little bit of a predicament because obviously when we swing, he can tap one of our energy. But if we swing while tapped out, which is what we're going to aim to do here, uh, Chappelle's auto will trigger and it won't have anything to tap. So it won't, it won't be able to trigger later on in the turn when I when I continue to attack. So uh, playing Piccolo here, we got the Basil off the board, which is obviously a good feeling because Basil's dual attack... Uh, not very difficult to turn on, and it is a headache to deal with, especially when you have to just combo 5k to defend your leader each time. So we got the 3-drop on the field. Again, I could attack with a 3-drop, but I think I'm better off just swapping right into the 4, just so I can waste Chappelle's auto. It does make me lose out on an attack, which definitely means Chappelle is doing a good job of what it's intended to do. But I'd rather be that than tap out and not be able to play my 4-drop before Awakening. I am debating though what I want to do here. 
And it is a bit unfortunate that I ended up charging the uh, the Piccolo. I could have played the Piccolo this turn, but charging the charging options in hand were a little bit rough. So we're gonna play the four drop. Gives Piccolo a marker. We swing to the lead. Now we've wasted the Chappelle effect. We'll see if he opts to take the damage or he can even Zamasu my leader. Okay, so he's gonna take that. We're gonna awaken here. Piccolo gains a marker from my opponent taking a damage. And here comes Broly's leader crit swing at Mecha Frieza. So he's going to activate Nimbus. He's going to take a life for it. And that's, that's a bit of a weird one just because in doing that, he's essentially crit himself, if that makes sense. Like... He lost a card from hand and took a life, so advantage-wise, he evened out, but it's essentially like he crit himself, so that was just a little bit weird. He could have probably used the energy for that, but not the worst thing, I suppose. We're going into the five drop here. I believe we only have one more attack because he did pitch a card for Nimbus. So we're going to go in for that 30k crit swing at his leader. We do have an energy open for a counter attack, so that's not bad. He's going to awaken on defense here in a combo. Bringing in Raider's Warcry. And he's going to take the damage anyway. Okay, so it seems like he just really wanted to get Raiders in play. He's going to tap my Ba, which is uh, definitely a headache for me because Ba is a super free form of defense in the deck. And, you know, I have to tap it to use it. So it getting tapped already is definitely not a great thing. I do have Violent Rays. He is charging to three, though. We saw that he pitched a cooler. So that's a card we can be afraid of here. Charge into three. So James is going to go in with Chappelle. I'm going to activate Violent Race. And James is going to activate Cooler. Okay, so that's unfortunate. My hit my blockers tapped. My negate got counter countered. And uh, he's got some beefy boys in the field to put a lot of pressure on my leader here. I don't. I have a super combo, which is nice. Uh, maybe that'll help me out here. He's gonna get into Unite Assemble though, so he's gonna get a ton of free draw here. He's gonna get Basil on the board. Basil is live at the moment, so that's just even like more insult to injury. Like he's really gonna be able to force me down to two. Uh, very, very easily. So that hurts for me. Alright, so there's the first 19k swing coming in at the leader. The combo 5. I'm gonna, I'm assuming I'm gonna have to combo 5k a lot this turn. Uh, but in the end, I think this is where we uh, we get got. <laughs> Another 5k to the second 19k swing. Leader coming in at leader. Debating what I want to do, debating if I want to take the damage because honestly, he's, he's got another 15k swing coming in that he's, if I don't take it here, he's going to have to force it on the cooler swing. So I do end up taking it here. I could have comboed out of it and then tried my best to combo out a cooler. If he didn't have super combos, I would have been okay, but he actually has the Vegeta's final flash. So that's essentially a super combo in his deck. So I'm pretty sure he would have been able to force the cooler damage in anyway. And now he just goes all in on the Bardock swing. So let's see what he's got here. Doesn't look like he has any super combos. If he had super combos, I'm sure he would have dropped already. Five cards in hand he can't quite combo with from the looks of it. So that's going to be a 35, 45, 55, 60k Raiders. Didn't combo the cooler. But I don't think we can get there. We got 25, 35, 45. We've got 55. So that is going to be the game. Um, I don't know. Most games I've played Red Bull against Mecha, it does feel very, very close. Uh, Mecha, it kind of feels like Mecha has to win on a clapback. But 
I guess in that regard, in this game, he really had a great setup, you know, bloodlusting my one drop and uh, interrupting a lot of my plays. So that seemed to work out very, very well for him. A lot of games have come down to clapbacks, but Mecha, in terms of just interruption and defense, Mecha is incredible in that regard. So uh, I don't know this again, two of the decks that are looking to be top of the meta. So I do want to know in the comments below what you think about this gameplay, about this matchup in general. Let me know and I will see you guys next time.